Hello drummers and other creatures, I'm back with another video and today I'm going to introduce five top tips to help you get started on the drums. Not necessarily the five top tips, but five top tips nonetheless. Uh, I like to think I'm a tip-top kind of drum teacher and uh, all my tips are top in some way and these are five top tips. Um, I'm fairly confident that there'll be something of interest for just about anybody, even if you're not a beginner, um, there, there might be something that resonates here and that's useful. And uh, I think that there's something to uh, entertain you and uh, also annoy uh, everybody. I think there's something in here to annoy everybody, at least reasonably equally, as well as entertain and inform. But let's see how I do. What's my first top tip? It is to sit at your drums every single day. If you would like to learn how to play the drums, and again, I'm, I'm not authorized to say really, but I think this applies to any musical instrument, um, try and engage with your instrument in some way every single day. Uh, I find that with students, a lot of the time, uh, there's this sort of tendency to get an idea in mind that you have to do a certain amount of practicing and work through these sorts of routines, and you have to sit every day for a certain amount of time, and so on and so forth, and it can quite, quickly get into this like mental game where you feel daunted to sit down and uh, you know engage with your instrument um, it feels challenging and so on so I'd like to give you permission to just sit and do something on your drums every single day and if not on the drums you know grab a practice pad but pick up your sticks every single day right there uh, moon gel off here and uh, you know so grab your practice pad you know just start moving your hands a little bit, that's enough if you want to, yeah? But make yourself do it every single day. Uh, if you spend two minutes or three minutes or four minutes, it doesn't matter. Yes, it's really cool if you can practice every day for four hours. Who wouldn't want to, well, no, actually, I wouldn't want to do that. But, you know, if you can do a long amount of practice every day, that's great. You will make loads of progress that way. But even if you can't, don't think that, um, because you haven't picked up the sticks and done a big practice session that it's not worth picking up your sticks and doing something, right? And again, you know, I'm picking up my uh, trusty real fill pad here, not advertising it, but you know, I'm picking up my pad here. Um, I can do something with that. You know, you've got a few different strokes you can try. Um, Later on, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to talk about why you don't have to do anything complicated, but pick up your practice pad and do something with it. Alternatively, that was a bit pointless, wasn't it, actually? I, mean, I didn't really need to demonstrate that. But, um, there you go, I'm over-prepared. Uh, you know, alternatively, you can pick up, let's get the moon gel back. Um, you can pick up uh, the sticks and just play a groove for a few minutes. don't have to think too much about it. Sit at the drums, it's fine, but have a go at doing that every single day because it helps to develop a habit, it helps to create a relationship, and I think it st stimulates your brain. It must do. I'm not going to pretend I'm some sort of scientifically knowledgeable person, but I think if your brain is stimulated every day to do something, then it will create a habit, and over a period of time, you'll want to spend more and more time with your instrument. And so when you create that habit and you don't judge yourself about it at all, one minute you picked up your sticks, you played around the kit a little bit, 10 minutes tomorrow, 30 minutes another day, three minutes another day, pick up your sticks every day. You're doing a really good thing just to pick up your sticks, playing your pad, playing your drum set and doing something. That's it. Now, the next thing, which is something that I'm slightly obsessed about, and it's like a really... Uh, it's something that, that, you know, I made a video recently, the thing that drummers are terrified of. Um, but people are terrified of this idea, but it's do things slowly. Now, um, I'm not saying that you, you mustn't do anything fast at all, but when you're in that mode of learning and developing your skill set, uh, a lot of stuff will work out best if you do it slowly. And so see if you can teach yourself to develop a nice, slow, relaxed tempo, and it's not the tempo that you feel like playing uh, music to. Well, now, what do I mean by that? It's like, you know, um, at some point you had this thought, oh, I'm gonna play the drums. And uh, again, uh, 
I'm fairly conscious that a lot of the people uh, watching my videos are older people. I don't, hopefully there's not young children watching this because I'm just too old. Don't listen to me, young children, I'm old. But um, there's older people, hello, I'm for you, um, listening and watching my videos. And so I'm assuming people who, um, well, from, from what I've heard anyway, people who've maybe played the drums in their youth and dropped out of it and, and come back to it and want to develop their skills, or just people who are picking up the sticks for the first time. And you've had this thought, I want to play the drums. And, you know, maybe you were listening to, I don't know what, some uh, good old up-tempo rock music, and you sit at the drum kit, and this thing in your mind is triggered where you're thinking, right, let's go, one, two, three, four. so exciting I want to be a drummer even though I missed the snare there somehow but I want to be a drummer oh and then every time you sit at the kit which you're going to start doing every day hopefully um, but don't give yourself a bad time don't give yourself a hard time rather if you don't but you set your intention but anyway I'm digressing you've got that feeling of a, a great rock song right I don't, I don't think there's many people who um, you know listen to like a super slow ballad you know four non blondes whatever um, and thought, ah, oh, yeah, I want to be a drummer, right? Mm. That's probably not what jumps into your mind when you first think about playing the drums. But when you're trying to learn and practice, you want to internalize a tempo like that. You want to really get a sense of like, I don't know, something between 40 and 60 beats per minute as a place that you're gonna practice developing your initial rock vocabulary, okay? See if you can teach yourself to do that. Now, you're going to um, start learning things uh, and you know how, how do you even judge the tempo? Um, you might not feel comfortable using a click at first, but maybe you put a metronome on and listen to 40 beats per minute, listen to 50 or 60, whatever, and, and try and get yourself used to counting. And I don't think there's a sort of like perfect pitch equivalent to tempos. I don't know if there's people who can go, oh, that's 43 BPM or whatever. So I'm not saying you need to memorize uh, a specific um, metronome setting, but to try and give your, yourself a sense of uh, what a good slow tempo is. And, and for example, when you're practicing, set your metronome to 40 BPM or whatever, and then count along and try and get yourself into the habit of counting in before you start practicing anything. So if you're just developing some basic rock grooves, you're gonna, whatever it might be, um, get in the habit of counting yourself in. So you can listen to the metronome a little bit. One, two, I haven't got a metronome with me. Three, four, one, and two, and three, and four. Get yourself into counting a nice slow speed and figure out uh, what's an appropriate tempo that will allow your body to work out the coordination that it needs in a really relaxed way. And that is slow, okay? So you're looking at, you know, developing new grooves when you're getting your first bunch of uh, sort of eighth note rock beat coordination together, something like, whatever works for you, whatever tempo allows you to work out the coordination in a nice relaxed way. Now, my next um, suggestion is learn vocabulary. Uh, I've come across like a lot of people discussing on the, uh, the, the internet in various fora, fora, is that the right, or forums do we say, in, in, in different forums, people getting started with the drums who seem to be pulling out the sheet music for like highway to hell or something, and then trying to learn how to play according to the sheet music, looking at all those dots going up and down the page and rests and so on and so forth. Um, I don't recommend doing that. I think develop your vocabulary first, learn how to play that along to music, and um, you know, then apply it, you know, get, get used to doing that. Now, what do I mean by learning vocabulary? Um, for example, and, and again, you don't have to use books for this, 
purpose, uh, and that's a whole other discussion I can have. You can, you can, there are ways actually you can do this without books. But there are also, there's a bunch of books with some uh, initial uh, rock drumming vocabulary that is basically got all the stuff that you need to know in order to play rock drums. And, um, you know, get, get one or more of those. One is enough, to be honest, but get a book and work your way, again, slowly and in a really relaxed fashion through some pages of vocabulary. Now, what books am I referring to? I personally am a fan of Joel Rothman's Mini Monster Book, which is a really cool book and contains tons of vocabulary that's good for rock and pop music. And it covers, uh, I don't know, every kind of uh, standard mainstream sort of groove you could want. There's stuff about fills, there's open hi-hat stuff, there's uh, how to play ghost notes and drags and so on and so forth. Um, it's packed full of stuff. It's one of very few drum books that you could play through from beginning to end and everything in there is useful, which, you know, again, there's not that many. Um, other books I know of are, there's uh, Rod Morgenstern, or is it M Morgenstein, one of those, um, sorry. Uh, but there's a book called The Drum Set Musician, which is really, really good, again, and covers a huge amount of like basic vocabulary that you need. Uh, Peter Erskine has Drum Set Essentials, which I think is like a two or three part um, series of books, which again, really, really thoroughly covers all the basic stuff you need to know. And of course, very famously, there's Carmine, a piece or a peaches. Oh God, I'm not, I should have done my homework with pronunciation, but there's Carmine, a piece or a peaches, a realistic rock book, which again is a fantastic uh, selection of, you know, all the stuff you need to, to just start getting your rock and pop playing together. And, and um, you know, work your way through that vocabulary. In my opinion, it's much better doing that and trying to then apply uh, the beats, uh, patterns or the fills or whatever to playing along to music without worrying too much about following a chart note for note. I mean, no drummer really plays like that, so it's not necessary. Now again, please be aware, I'm not saying you must not do this, I'm just saying, you know, some, some people that really, really enjoy learning off charts and that's all fine, but I get the impression that people think that that's uh, the way to learn and it's not, I think that I would say in most cases, uh, that's just a, a pain in the neck, trying to learn how to play off charts. Now, that, I think, is something that uh, is reasonably uh, likely to annoy some people, so please get annoyed and let me know in the comments, uh, because it all helps the algorithm. So, you know, there we go, let's have a chat about the subject, if you like. Um, so let me uh, know, while I'm uh, thinking about the algorithm, I'll just... Uh, 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 remember to mention that I am a drum teacher, oh, I said that at the beginning, but I'm available to offer one-on-one -on -one lessons to anybody anywhere in the world uh, via Zoom and Skype and so on and so forth. So if you like the content of my videos and you think I might be able to help you directly, please use the information in the description box below and get in touch with me and we can have a bit of a chat and see if there's something I can help you with. Okay, now the next uh, bit of advice or the top tip that I have is um, you know, you don't need to bother, and this, again, this is going to annoy lots of people, you don't need to bother with the book's stick control or syncopation, you don't need to bother with rudiments. Don't bother with them at the beginning. Now, again, I'm gonna qualify that by saying, if that floats your boat, if what you want to do is learn snare drum rudiments, if what you enjoy doing is learning how to read snare drum exercises or whatever out of read, um, if you want to play endless hours of sticking exercises, if that's the thing that you enjoy doing, please go ahead and do that. But um, there seems to be, again, this like culture on, uh, from what I've seen in the internet and in other parts of the drumming world, that when someone goes, oh, I'd like to learn how to play the drums, you know, is there, is there anything you'd recommend? Then there seems to be this like massive uh, knee-jerk reaction to the question uh, that says, oh, get yourself a copy of stick control or syncopation, or learn the rudiments, right? And, and you know, there's, there's a sort of orthodoxy behind that, but you really don't, you don't need stick control, you don't need syncopation, and you don't need the rudiments. Now, is stick control useful? Does it have stuff in it that, that if you, you follow that book, you know, can you use it for learning the drums? Of course. That would be, I'm not suggesting that the book is not useful. Is syncopation useful? Of course, it's great to learn how to read music. It's a useful skill to have. And um, again, for example, one of my absolute favorite uh, online 
you know, drum blogging people. There's a guy called Todd Bishop, a cruise ship drummer. Look him up. He's absolutely brilliant. And he's figured out a thousand different ways to use syncopation um, and, uh, you know, by understanding how to read the rhythms there, you can, you know, take that one book and turn it into, a, you know, a million different exercises and ways of developing vocabulary in, in playing grooves and solos and so on. It's a fantastically useful resource. But if you're getting started on the drums, you just don't need those things. You know, do you uh, want to sit and, and play a bunch of like sticking exercises for hours on end? Do you have enough time in your life? Or would you prefer to sit and work through uh, and just develop, you know, some good solid foundational uh, technical understanding? Would you like to uh, develop your vocabulary and start playing along to music? If that's the case, you, you just don't need those things, right? Now, some clever clogs is going to say, oh yeah, well, you know, everybody needs to be able to play single strokes and that's a rudiment. Yes, everybody needs to be able to play single strokes. You, you can't really avoid it when you're playing the drums. If you're gonna play a fill, you're probably gonna play some single strokes. Um, it's quite useful to learn how to play double strokes as well. Uh, paradiddles are useful, but again, for a beginner, it's not essential. Although, again, I always start beginners with learning singles, doubles, and paradiddles. But, you know, yes, you, you're going to need how to play some, to, to know how to play some flams and, and drags and so on. You need accents, but you just don't need to sit and, and learn the rudiments. It's completely unnecessary, in my opinion. Now, again, please feel free to get pissed off with me and let me know what an idiot I am uh, if that's what floats your boat. Um, it's always good to have a nice debate about these topics. But just uh, the reason I'm saying is, uh, this is because if you're a beginner and someone's told you you need a copy of stick control and you should work through that and you buy this book and you look at like just a page of right, 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 left, right, 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 left, 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 right, and so on. And, if, you know, if you look at that and think, oh, wow, this is this is my idea of a great time. Please go and do it. Enjoy it. It's great. But if you look at that and think, really, do I have to bloody sit and do these boring sticking exercises? I want to be playing some ZZ Top songs. <laughs> If you don't need stick control, forget about it. You can come to it at any stage in the game if you find that that's something that will help your drumming, okay? I hope I've said that reasonably succinctly and uh, managed to delight and piss off an equal number of people by saying that. Now, my final top tip, or is it a point, is um, everything you need to be able to do, all the skills that you need when you're learning how to play the drums, uh, and again, I think this probably applies to any other instrument. Um, all the skills are learnable, right? And it really, it perturbs me, shall we say, one of my favorite words, it perturbs me when I see people um, talking about, say, the idea that somebody has, for example, an innate sense of time. Uh, oh, I haven't got, you know, people say this about themselves. Oh, I, I want to learn the drums. I bought some drums. I put the metronome on. But, you know, oh, my timing isn't good. Well, of course, it's not good at, at first because your body hasn't learned all the coordination stuff. I mean, again, I don't know. I'm, I'm, and I'm, I really don't know if all these people are doing, you know, clever pictures inside the brain and all this really know what the hell they're talking about. But, you know, there seems to be some process there of building up little neural pathways where we're teaching our body different forms of coordination so that we can operate our limbs and our mind, you know, and, and, and get stuff to work in a synchronous way when we want it to. In other words, your body has learned how to walk, it's learned how to eat, talk. There's like a million different types of sophisticated coordination going on that your brain is managing. And when you come to learn a musical instrument, and you know, I, I feel uh, familiar with this, with the drums, I, I, I'm not a fay, or you know, I don't really know how to play any other instruments, but with the drums, you know, I know that there are things that I can do and things that I can't do, and I'm conscious of the fact that I have taught myself how to do all those things. Some of that stuff I've taught under the guidance of various teachers, uh, which is, super duper, and uh, some of it I've worked on myself, but everything I feel like I can do on the drums is something that I've learned how to do. I've developed the skill by basically doing a bunch of repetitious stuff, and eventually my brain gets used to telling my limbs and my mind how to do the stuff I want to do, right? So I think that's a really important thing to understand. If you want to play the drums, you may not be able to just play a beat straight away. 
if you slow down enough, you can teach your body how to do it. You may not be able to play along to a metronome accurately at first. You might not even feel like you can hear it properly, um, but you can learn how to do it. Everything that you need to be able to do to play the drums at the level, whatever it is you'd like to do, is possible to learn. Now, again, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you could extrapolate from that, but I think that's, maybe that's my toppest tip. If you're interested in learning how to play the drums or any musical instrument, or really if you're interested in any skill, you can learn how to do it, yeah? Are you going to necessarily be the next, I don't know, Daddy Dave, Hotshot Shredder person? You know what, even I think that's possible, but let's assume most of us don't have uh, the number of hours in the day that it would require, but whatever your ambitions are, you can learn how to do it. You can learn how to play the drums. So. If there's a voice in your head telling you, I don't have a sense of rhythm, I'm not naturally inclined to do this, I don't, I'm not musical, I'm not a musical person, even if you're not those things at this point, you can learn how to be those things. It's very straightforward. And I'm pretty convinced that applies to almost anybody. Okay? So if you're interested in learning the drums or any other musical instrument, Go for it. You need a lot of patience. You need to sit every day. You need to go slowly. You need to not bother with stick control unless you really like it. Um, and I can't remember what was my other uh, thing. You know, you need to learn your vocabulary and, and learn how to apply that to playing along to music. That was the other one. Um, and that's it. And the rest is up to you. So those are my five top tips for beginners wanting to learn how to play the drums. I hope that made some sense. I hope I didn't ramble on too much, but I'm really trying to just let the camera go and just to, you know, say whatever it is I've got to say, because I, I think maybe that's a way to, to be a little bit more interesting. Uh, so thank you very, very much for sticking with this video. If you have so far, please remember, it helps me if you subscribe to my videos, and obviously you will also be notified of future interesting things I may have to say. Um, please comment in the comments section if there's anything you'd like me to cover because, uh, you know, I'm pretty responsive to that and I'm interested in knowing uh, who's interested in what and providing something of interest to as many people as possible. And finally, just go off and practice.